This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. This is my review for Season 1, Episode 2 of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The Star Spangled Man. And I will say there's spoilers, but if I forget to say that in any video, I really don't care. You don't click on a video about something new and I expect spoilers. I mean, here's the thing. I don't feel at fault at all. If you watched one of my videos, didn't see something yet, and it gets spoiled. Because it's basically would be like if I went and ran a red light and got hit by a car. It's not the fault of that driver, it would be my fault for going out in the red light. Because I decided to do something that I knew could lead and likely would lead to that event happening. Of course, now I'll just go straight in and talking about it. I really think that this episode is great, and I just can't wait to keep seeing it. It's very interesting to set up all these characters, and I think, looking at it, the Flag Smashers definitely might have some connection to the U.S. government, but I'm not fully sure, and I think that they may just be set up to give the new Captain America a new credible threat to make him justified in being coming Captain America. But of course, talking about our new Captain America, we get introduced to him at the beginning, going out at a football game at his old high school. His name is John Walker. Honestly, I think that he does look like a person who could be Captain America. I definitely am going to expect him to start falling from grace soon. And he will not be as good. I think this will be a very similar situation to anyone who has read it, Nightfall, and its sequels. And then we technically it's not called Nightfall. I think it's also called Night's Quest and Night's End. But it's been a few months since I've read that comic, so I'm not fully really sure. But basically, in that, Ezreal takes over for Batman after Bane Ricks is back which is a similar situation to this, and at first, he is a good hero, but after, he starts to lose his mind, and it goes way too extreme, and the mantle is being forced away from him, but instead of being taken back by Steve, this time it's been taken back by Sam and Bucky, and Sam will ultimately take the shield, Unless they decide to give it to Bucky, it could go either way. And honestly, I don't know which one I would like more. I think they're both deserving to be Captain America. And I really would be fine either way. The one thing that I felt kind of off in this episode, honestly, was the fact that Bucky was just able to join Sam's mission. Since it is a government sanctioned mission. I don't think that they hit to, he is supposed to be able to randomly, at the last minute, join in. But I'd be completely wrong, as I am not in the military service, or have ever been. And although I do know of people who are in it, I'm not really close to connected to them at this moment. I haven't talked to them much about it. I do still respect veterans, but I just haven't had much time talking to them about their service specifically, so I'm not fully sure. But it just feels kind of off to me. I definitely think that the new super soldier they introduced is pretty interesting. But I also think that his introduction also creates some small plot holes. With especially the fact that it seemed like it was almost impossible to replicate the super soldier serum. And that was a major plot point for many things. Including the Incredible Hulk and more, and even though that movie isn't really considered all that much often, there are characters that remain from it, and these events were referenced in the Avengers, so I think that it does kind of make an odd plot hole in it, and does that explain how the Hulk was created, 
because it definitely seems that this version of the super soldier was at least created the salt in the serum far before the Hulk did it. And there's a lot more super soldiers, so I'm not really sure how. But that could be explained, and it could be explained that they were more hidden, and the U.S. government didn't really know about it, which I just realized doesn't work because he was working for the U.S. government, from at least what I assumed. I might be wrong, but I'm sure I'm right. And then after that, we also learned that he was experimented on in prison, which is presumably by the U.S. government, which again ties me into the thought that the Flag Smashers are likely connected to the U.S. government, and they're going to be put up as a sort of villain, just really to justify their existence of a new Captain America. And of course, this kid of Captain America definitely doesn't seem like he is going to be too stable. But I just can't wait to keep seeing this. I'm really excited for next week's episodes. And I'm really thinking that Zemo might be the one trying to take the Flag Smashers down. Because he knows that they are frauds. Of course, I don't think that everyone would know this if this is true. I think that the Captain America, the new one, definitely isn't aware of it. And once he learns of it, that may be what makes him give up the shield, realizing that he is just a fraud, and there's nothing really special about him, and he was just some kind of marketing ploy from the U.S. government. But I actually have no idea, and I think this is a really interesting show, and I really just can't wait for the next episode. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories, and may the force be with you.